Hey guys, this is KSP with Tape, and today you join me for episode 7 of Collaborative Warfare. And in recent days, the Territorial Arctic Protection Entente and A Industries have been in talks, and we are now in an alliance. Because we have no... We, we are not going to fight each other when we have people like Penguin to fight, and Twitchy and Aganarch are fighting. But me and Twitchy can't fight, and Aganarch and Penguin can't fight, so we have transferred some base defenses around to make ourselves some impenetrable bases without breaking treaties, so we can store things there safely. Um, there have also been a couple of rule changes this turn. We are now allowed to launch two ground units, um, and one air unit at a time. Um, and we can also uh, drop very small, because we can have up to four probes, uh, probe cores on an aircraft, or any kind of craft we from an aircraft we can drop, um, uh, we can drop small defense drones with a maximum of two guns and two sidewinders. But yes, and also um, helicopters and missiles are now counted in the ground unit category because it makes them more usable because who would trade a plane for a helicopter? But anyway, the main thing we are here to talk about today is the fact that Penguin, the Penguin or Empire, launched strikes all across our territory. They flew through the Arctic, devastated this base, um, took back their plane out uh, Werbery's claim, and then attacked uh, Jedtop Isle and Dundurn's Edge, I want to say? Um, yeah, it basically attacked um, lots of bases, took out loads of defenses, only took one base, which is in the rules, but you can fire missiles at other things, so we've had lost a lot of defenses and have a lot of undefended bases. So, luckily I can launch two grand, um, ground units this turn, which is good, and I'm launching this air unit, which is a bomber, and we will be bombing our own territory. But don't worry, we're going to be dropping bombs of defense, because these, uh, we're actually dropping, um, uh, defense drones, as things I mentioned that can have two guns and two missiles. Um, each of them have two chain guns and two sidewinders, and will be our temporary defenses in bases that can't be reached, um, by by like turrets these uh, today because we can only put down two turrets and we I think we have four undefended bases so we're gonna fly over to Werbery's claim it's undefended right now because Penguin didn't have any like turrets to put there um, we're gonna take it back and we're gonna leave a drone defense there and then we're gonna drop uh, two more off at Dundard's edge and then we're gonna put down flat cannons here in the Arctic he struck the Arctic and I didn't indeed dr drop my coffee all over me when the bombs came down he struck at the Arctic. That is unacceptable. There will be vengeance today as well. Don't you worry. There will be the ven revengiest vengeance in the world. We will go and strike his bases. Hopefully take some and just fuck shit up. Anyway, we have sped this up to four times time accelerate our large bomber. This is the fortress variant. Um, and you probably haven't seen this in this series, well you haven't seen this in this series before, you may have seen something similar in my stuff before, but this is the Hap Mark III Fortress variant. It's called Fortress because it carries uh, sidewinders. All Hap planes, which is heavy assault plane, um, are designed to fend off uh, chase planes, so that's why they have that turret at the back and that armoured cap where the missiles are most likely to hit, um, that'll defend it there. But this is also made to defend itself while on the ground. It has three Sidewinder missiles so that uh, if a plane comes in, it will have a, um, some sort of hope of defending itself. So yes, this is the Fortress variant and can actually be a base defense itself, but won't be um, today. It's just going to be sitting around in um, the... Uh, it'll be sitting around down south, I think. So yes, um, we're just going to spend a very long time flying across the Arctic. It's quite a nice plane. I mean, it's a bit wobbly. Um, and a little later, some of the controls go a bit weird. But it's actually pretty uh, pretty nice just to fly for a long time. It is slow. I mean, with the full payload, as you can see now, it gets about... I can't see, but it's very slow. It's maybe 120, 150 meters a second. Um, so, yeah, you do have to time warp, and you have to kind of be very patient. But I think uh, we've all become pretty patient in this series, just doing really long flights. I mean, yeah. Uh, with the empty... Um, cargo bay though, it can fly much faster, but yeah, this, um, well, this is just quite a nice, uh, plane, it's not as, uh, like a tactical bomber, it's more just kind of a heavy bomber, um, and it can obviously be outfitted with a bomb payload, which hopefully it will be at some point, um, well, it would be nice if I didn't have to outfit it with bombs, but, you know, Penguin is a bastard, so, yeah, obviously it won't be outfitted with bombs today, because you can't just, you, know, you can't just, just keep adding weapons to your planes in the same turns, or it would just be ridiculous. But yeah, it is um, very good for you know, cargo runs as well. I do have a tactical tactical bomber in the works, but um, for now this is just more relevant. But yeah, it has incredibly long range. Um, 
just it, like it flies really slowly but it carries a shit ton of fuel and it uses normal jet engines so it can just fly pretty much anywhere well it can fly literally anywhere in the world and back and just deliver death wherever it wants so this may look like a bit of a stupid over encumbered large mammoth of a plane but it's actually an incredibly useful asset for the territorial arctic protection entente and we are working on tactical bombers which are more kind of lighter than this sort of thing but bigger than um, fighters so they can carry a large amount of weapons and dodge shit but yeah this could this could drop anything i want this could drop a cruise missile um, not like the BD Armoury cruise missile, I'm talking custom cruise missiles that will uh, deliver pretty serious death. It can drop um, warheads if I want, I can make a warhead bomb, it can drop normal bombs, cluster bombs, snake eye bombs, Mark 82s, it can just fire missiles out of it, I could put a howitzer on it, I could go nuts! Uh, <laughs> and, but yeah, it's made for just fucking shit up, basically. Anyway, one of the fun things I've been experiencing today is uh, insane crashing, so, uh, yeah. We actually had a crash after I landed, and this was my last quick save. And I'm still using Bandicam, which I do change slowly uh, later in the episode because Bandicam loses footage after a crash. And I'm just going to move over to Fraps for this sort of stuff. So yeah, this is my landing. I'm not going to try and land on the runway because this is a bit of a... It's a pretty big plane and that runway's not very big and the ground looks flat enough. Um, but yeah, so I am sorry we lost that footage, but don't worry. It was just flying over some really beautiful mountains and doing a circle and then landing. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know, it's just the problems with Bandicam, but I'm probably going to start using OBS maybe, um, and Fraps for this episode, but Fraps makes massive files, which is a problem. So yeah, but the, um, glide slope of this is pretty nice, um, and it has lots of wings, well, it doesn't have that many wings, um, the old versions had lots of little wing surfaces, but this is just using the airplane wings, with some shuttle wings in there as well, to, because it needs to move its center of lift around, um, and both of those kinds of wings can carry fuel, which makes it even longer range. And like with this, I totally trade range, uh, totally totally trade speed for range because range on this sort of thing is super important. Anyway, pretty nice landing actually. I probably could have done that on the runway, but I'm just not very accurate with this plane, um, and it's quite laggy because it has like three turrets inside of it. So yeah, um, pretty nice landing. It was pretty stressful in testing. I um had to. I should have recorded my testing, there were a lot more uh, explosions, I'd, I'd say, because it's quite hard to land this sort of bomber if you're not, you have to really line up and really slow down, but it, once you've got it, it's just actually kind of a dream to land, because it's got giant wheels and it's massive, and it just doesn't, it's not too twitchy either, and we know how much we hate twitchy. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, we've just got to slow down, which also takes an eternity with these wheels and a plane this big. So yeah, we've got, I think, four Kerbals in here right now. I just put random Kerbals in there, but uh, none of them have seen action, I think. Uh, we will be using Bob Kerman on a mission today, which will uh, go perfectly. So, let's uh, drop let's drop our first, our first um, freaking thing. These are our first turret. They're supposed to be dropped from the air, so they have parachutes. But I thought it was, um, uh, well, you know, it's just... just might as well just drop it here, um, because I'm on the ground, it means I don't have to worry about parachuting or anything. So yeah, annoyingly the action groups are set up to use those SRBs to get it down slow, uh, faster, because at the back of the plane, when the plane's moving, it tends to slam into the back of the plane and lose stuff. But anyway, I should probably just um, drop this. Now I'm going to fire the parachutes just cause, just, just to see if I can soften the landing, but it should be able to land, I mean it has landing legs. But yeah, you can see it has two Sidewinder missiles, and um, you can vaguely see it, and it has a couple of small 30mm turrets. Uh, yeah, these are just because since, well, these came about because they're not particularly effective turrets, but they um, are very useful when something like this happens, when you have, like, so many bases devastated. Sometimes you just need to drop a shit ton of stuff. And yeah, Twitchy did it, and now I'm doing it. So yeah. Anyway, problem here is my plane's quite big. Um, well, no, my plane's quite low down relative to the size of the, the probe, uh, the turret probe. So I'm pretty much just going to have to drag myself over it. Uh, so yeah, that's happening. Um, and these wheels can't steer, so it's not like I can get out of it. So, yeah. This is gonna be fun, and this is what happened after a little bit of uh, persuading. I just dragged myself over it. I, I don't know what I smashed off there, probably... Oh, not a missile, so that's good. I think I just lost little bits of stuff. But yeah, that's the best I could do. I should have just taken off and dropped it, but that didn't occur to me until I'd already dropped the probe, so, you know. Not fantastic. However, luckily it still has these SRBs, um, 
that it was going to use for escaping the plane quickly. So I used one of them just to push it over into not a perfect position, but a better position. Look at that. It's slightly better. See, I utilize resources I already have. It's called being smart, efficient, and totally not a Nazi. So, you know, let's just get the landing gear deployed. Um, this landing, this leg is already through the ground, so it can't really push against the ground. So it's stuck kind of like this, but it's good enough, probably. I mean, it's, it's, did it fall over? Sure. Has Sony Vegas stopped playing the actual video I kind of want to be seeing? Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure this is me taking down the flag, um, which is um, the Penguin's Union Jeb. Uh, but yeah, Sony Vegas has decided it's best that I don't see this bit of footage. So, I'm pretty sure it's me taking down the flag. But when I put the flag back up, it's another Union Jeb. And I tried to change that, but I freaking couldn't, because the mission flag is, for this is the Union Jeb. And there's not a lot I can do. Uh, not a lot I can do about Sony Vegas being a dick, either. Okay, so now it's playing again, because I, uh, I don't know, fucking... Bullshit, Sony bullshit. Anyway, let's get uh, this Kerbal back in our plane. It's annoying we had to leave a Union Jeb, but still, it marks our territory, and of course, we're not a Nazi. Penguin's a Nazi. And that's not, uh, I mean, that's, that's his wartime flag, although, yeah, it's a hot gaming flag, but I kind of like it. So, yeah. And uh, so I'm keeping it. No, I would like my bear flag to be going up. Um, you know, the bears. Uh, we are the bears. Yeah, that's what I'm going to call my soldiers. We are the bears. Anyway, let's take this off, and then, given that this next flight took um, about 30 minutes and this is already 11 minutes in and there's a shit ton more stuff to show you today um, I'm just gonna skip through the flight because it's just traveling and it took ages because I couldn't time accelerate for a lot of it because it was being really twitchy and it was being annoying but I did get to Dundad's Edge in the end by nightfall um, so here we are and uh, I'm just gonna show you my dropping off of the probe drone defense things so yeah uh, pretty annoying because, well, it's pretty hard to actually eject something like this out of a moving plane. Uh, you have to turn the engines off because if you're accelerating and the probe stops accelerating, you're going to slam into it like that. Um, although I wasn't accelerating, but I did lose a missile and uh, I do just about get out of this. A lot of uh, tricky situations dropping that. Uh, it took me a depressing amount of time to get it that good in testing. I do do a lot of tests on my planes. But yeah, this went pretty well. It's still got all of its guns and ammo, just not its... It's still got a missile, so yeah. And we drop in two of these. So here's the second pass. The turning takes freaking ages. Um, so let's just drop this down a little closer to the base. I don't drop... I'm not supposed to drop them down on the base because um, the base is quite glitchy and uh, base defenses have been disappearing recently. Um, yeah, another nice explosion. That was actually just a small structural part, so it's fine. Uh, I'm actually going to get out of this dive before I go and check that because it's kind of getting kind of worrying and I've burned off a lot of fuel and it's kind of a little tiny bit unstable, but it's fine. Yeah, uh, this is doing doing pretty well and now it's much faster. Uh, so yeah, now we're getting our way. Just, just pull up a little bit and then, uh, yeah, and then I'm just going to cut through the flight because I flew all the way down to the desert. Um, so yeah, again, just cutting through for the, because this is already like a 27 minute video or something. So, yeah, this is just me coming into this runway. I picked this runway because it's very well defended, and it's a big runway, and it's very hard, and it, I, as I've said, it's quite hard to land this bomber. Um, although I landed it on grass, so it can't be that hard. But, yeah, it's quite a nice wide runway. Uh, it's in a good place, and, yeah, it's... Uh, this was... I probably should have left it in there just showing you me lining it up, because that's actually quite an important process. And if you're going to fly a plane like this, just line it up. Maybe I'll do a tutorial on how to fly really big planes at some point. Although I'm not that good, because um, this was uh, pretty lucky. Uh, it might, yeah, I really should record my testing, there are a lot more explosions. Anyway, uh, just a matter of slowing down now, but yeah, that was a, a very long flight, that took me pretty much all night. Uh, <laughs> no, it wasn't that long, but seriously, uh, yeah, kind of, kind of hard to fly this far in a giant, giant plane going like less than 200 meters a second, but patience is everything, and I just watch TV on my other screen, um, and just kind of let it fly straight. That's why I fly my, designed my planes to fly with SAS on, so I don't have to fly them. So I just let just let them um, not fly with SAS on, but you know they'll just be stable once I've hit like, um, like uh, the, yeah, just hit SAS, just using like cabin talk and um, the like control surfaces to keep it stable, and then I can just watch friends uh, because yeah. Anyway, I am actually going to put this on guard mode just in case. Uh, might as well. It has missiles, so uh, guard mode it is. Fire that up. Uh, drop this down to I think uh, just like three. 
just so there's not like loads of annoying lag from things uh, from from scan intervals. But yeah, anyway, uh, now it's time for my attack run. So I'm gonna hand you over briefly to. Okay, so now now it's time to hide Taylor out of Seven Inlet because I'm pretty sure there's about to be a naval invasion. No, that is, is of course not what's co going on. Today we're gonna go and take a base to uh, you know strike back at Penguin, and we have Bob Kerman back in our high-speed interceptor because, well, he's had a nice, you know, relax having a swim on the beach for a while because he was treated so terribly in the, um, I, I don't know, where, where the communists are, Twitchy Sland, uh, the Democratic People's Republic of Clethu. Um, so yeah, anyway, uh, it's time to go and, well, I should have probably... <laughs> Talked about this before I took off, but I'll take off, get to a steady climb, and then tell you exactly what I'm going to do. Although I don't exactly know where I should be heading. Uh, okay. Alrighty, Roo. So, we're going to fly all the way down to... Um, I should probably open Base Boss, so that I know where I'm going. I should, I'm flying all the way down... That's the wrong bit. I'm flying all the way down to the tip. Um, just the tip. <laughs> uh, and uh, Yeah, okay, so, flying all the way down to the tip. I'm uh, going to take the tip. Uh, just gonna take just just the tip, and then uh, go to Bit Sandy, where I have total safety because Twitchy can't attack because it's Agonarch. Uh, no, because it's me, and Penguin can't attack because it's uh, Agonarch. Anyway, another long transit. But if I don't leave this in, then what are you gonna watch? And I actually do like the long transits. I know I do complain about this took freaking ages, but it's actually really nice just to see Kerbin. I mean, it is you know. A little marred by the fact that I'm gonna go kill some shit, but you know, whatever. I mean, Kerbin's a beautiful planet, and it's just nice to see all the mountains, see the Arctic, see the you know. I'm sure Penguin will enjoy seeing the Arctic. He'll rue the day he fired missiles at me. But I have to say, very smart because he's kind of limited my ability to really strike hard because I've had to use my air launch this time for re-defending myself. And all I have left is this uh, HSI, and I'm attacking a heliport, and I don't know if I can get a land, because this is actually really... This is worse to land than the freaking bomber. Um, so yeah, I'm I, I'm going to leave it a bit sandy. Um, but that does mean I can't take the heliport, so I'm thinking I might move on and attack something else um, as well, just to devastate. So yeah, it's kind of put a, a flaw in my plan, because I'd like to take this whole peninsula. But I'll send maybe I'll send an MPAV next time. And really fuck some shit up. I mean, you know, it's useful to have a VTOL. I mean, unless he puts, like, a defense plane down, I can't see why an MPAV wouldn't do the job. But yeah, you can see it's just going really fast now. I mean, it is much... I do like flying these, like, really high-speed planes, like the MPAV or the, um... Or the HSI, because it's just so quick getting everywhere. And look at those goddamn beautiful mountains. So do you, aren't you glad I leave this stuff in? Just staring at how goddamn beautiful it is. And all the higher resolution textures popping in, just like real life. But yeah, anyway, it's just, uh, yeah, some pretty dangerous turns at Mark 3, but whatever. But yeah, that is Bob Kerman after his nice beach holiday, because we obviously give our, um, our, our Kerbals leave. Because, you know, that's just, that's a good thing to do, and he likes the beach. Um, unlike what Penguin says, that I just left him in the water. <laughs> what, you think I was torturing him to try and get information about the KDK, the Kerbal's Democratic Republic of Northern Clefou? I wouldn't do that. That sounds like a Penguin thing. You know, uh, yeah, Penguin's, Penguin's pretty evil. I mean, he may call me a Nazi, but I, uh, was watching back the tapes when he, uh, took my Empav Raptor, shot a puppy. Mm-hmm, yep, walked right in, shot a puppy. Uh, and then like a baby deer, just, just, you know, just shooting random really cute, and then like a bunny, he just shot a bunny! That, that happened, that was in the video. Mm-hmm. Watch real close, you'll see him just shooting some <laughs> ridiculously adorable, um, ridiculously adorable animals. I actually like the idea of, uh, like an American sniper style film, where instead of shooting, where it's like, oh my god, I gotta shoot a kid, where it's just increasingly adorable, Animals holding bombs. It's like, oh come on! Oh god, it's a bunny. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I get weird ideas. Let's uh, let we're coming up on our attack run now. Um, and I'd love to inform you that that attack run went fantastically, and then just before I landed, it kind of crashed. So yeah, bit of a crash, but just record it again because my last quick save was pretty close to uh, the pretty close to the place. So. Uh, is the uh, the second time. Okay, <laughs> yeah, here we go on the attack run after the fun crash because stability. Yeah, 
Uh, <laughs> it's fun being thrown into a burning plane. Alright, I'm pretty sure I'm targeting... Yeah, now I'm targeting the lad. Uh, he's a lad. Okay. Oh, damn. Had it right the first time. Okay! Uh, okay, technically attack run two, because it crashed mid-attack run last time. So that's fun. Um, probably will be quick saving after the attack this time. So yeah. Okay, 29 kilometers away. Alright, moving in. Still pretty, pretty worried again. <laughs> Maybe if I pop less flares this time. Um, it'll make me look like less of a pussy. And then this will not be all for none. Okay, yeah. I have a tendency to overflare. Alright. Okay. I am a targeting the lad. Am I yes? Yep, good. Because there's also just a random piece of nothing down there. Um, probably has a crew in there. Because, uh, you know, Penguin hates his people. Mine get beach holidays. <laughs> God, we are being so slanderous towards each other. Uh. All right, I need to throttle up. Uh, take a low pass now. Take a take a direct pass and then pull sideways. I'm gonna pull to the right after I've opened fire a little. Um, I will get in physics range, obviously. Uh, I will fire before that though, because there's gonna be some r rule changes to when you can fire. But Penguin fired before load range of me, and that's fair because shit can shoot you down. You can shoot down missiles. There's two. Uh huh. Uh-huh. I don't think... I don't know if I want to land. Uh, okay. And... Fuck! And you're out. And we're out of here. Out of here. Okay, there's a missile. We got missiles in the air, boss. Or Sergeant Roger. Alpha Commander. Oh my god, please hit the thing. Oh yes, there it goes. Okay, that's like a shit ton of missiles. Don't turn towards them! Oh my god. Oh, <gasps> that was a lot of missiles, but luckily a lot of flares because I'm a little bitch. Okay, well that's ruined, so that's good. Okay, let's go take a low pass. Um, pretty dead. Got the Artemis down there. Yeah, it's just debris at this point. Two more missiles left, so that's good. That went well. Um. Okay. Oh, I will quick save because this is about where it crashed last time. I went actually exactly how it went last time. So there you go. Um, I am sorry. I, I, I mean, I've actually stopped using Bandicam after that last crash because Bandicam loses the footage, which is fun. Um, so I'm using Fraps. So you'll be able to see pre-crash footage from now on. Yeah, that is the problem with like just so many mods. Um, I think everyone else is using OpenGL, but I'm not because OpenGL hates my computer. So, you know. Yeah, so that was a second serious crash, um, which was a bit of a shame, but yeah, this is me back in post-commentary. Uh, but yeah, we're going to go and attack our second place. Uh, yeah, I am sorry that I keep like losing footage, I'm just going to stop using Bandicam for this, because KSP crashes so frequently with so many mods. It's actually, normal KSP is very stable, I actually have a very modded just like little playthrough by myself going on now, and it's really, really fine, but with something like this, I mean, what can you expect? Uh, so yeah, I'm... Sorry about that, and I'm sorry we had to do the attack run technically twice, but it went literally the same the first time, so... Um, yeah, anyway, it is time to uh, move on to... Uh, I forgot what it's called, but one of the islands with a runway on it. And we're gonna take it, and we're gonna destroy it, we're gonna land, we're actually gonna put a flag down, and it's just gonna be freaking grand! Freaking grand! <laughs> I don't know where grand came from, but that's what it's gonna be. So yeah, super high speed transit so we have as much fuel as possible for returning to Bit Sandy where we will be safe and Bob Kerman can have a nice little relax. We even informed the guys to, uh, you know, get him a ton of stuff when he gets there, just get his coffee ready, get his, you know, get his uh, brothel ready, because, you know, <laughs> soldiers on, like, leave, I mean, you know. <laughs> I don't know. I should probably stop talking so much about random crap and probably talk about what's going on. But after a lot of flying, I mean, what am I gonna, what am I gonna talk about? Anyway, so yeah, we are coming in for the attack now, and I will obviously hand you over to, once again to uh, live commentary me for the uh, for the for the attack on um, whatever the hell this is called, uh, math, math, mathless coast, math, 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 mathless. It has no maths. There's no maths on this coast. It was created without maths in a video game. Anyway, not the important, not not the important point. Anyway, here is uh, past me for the attack run. Okay, as soon as we enter range, I'm just gonna fire them. It's not worth dying over. And then pull out, players. 
I have noticed they've started to, in BD Armory, they keep neutering and then unneutering flares. Because, like, that's... No, 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 no. No, 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 no! 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 My plane! It's dead, but... Fuck. Oh, it's severed. It's missing its face. Shit. Bob. Bob Kerman. Bob Kerman has left the building. Fuck. Penguin, this is too far. You murdered Bob Kerman. In a totally fair active combat scenario. It only... The whole plane is fine! Except for the fucking cockpit. What the shit? I got too cocky. My own prowess. Now we're gonna just watch it die. Fuck. I did not expect that. I lost too much velocity. I went lateral to the... What the fuck? I guess that was just aerodynamic stress right there. Oh my god, why didn't I use the fucking AI flight computer? Oh, I can't, because it has no electric charge. Oh, and there was all the electric charge was in there. Yep. Well, this is a sad day for, uh... For the Territorial Arctic Protection Entente. We will inform the landing crew at Bit Sandy that there shall be, uh... There shall be no aircraft for them to await. And, uh, we will get our revenge. We will strike with prejudice of a non-Nazi kind, just of a military kind. And, uh, we will have our revenge. We will go to war. We will fight them on the beaches. We will fight them on the airfields, I want to say. We'll fight them in the skies. We'll fight them in the kebab shops. We'll fight them uh, in, on the street. We'll fight them in the space, but not really, because that would get me kicked out of Congress. We'll fight them, fight them in some mountains. We'll get a fucking ocean, uh, I bet. Have a fight there. We'll fight them in the fucking... Fight them in the fucking clouds. We'll fight on the fucking moon, maybe. We'll fucking... We're going to fight them everywhere. I'm fucking Churchill, I'll see you in a bit. Yeah, so maybe that was a little distressing for me, and I thought I was like an insane Churchill for a while, but we have lost Bob Kerman, our greatest pilot, our greatest war hero, murdered in his prime by... by Penguin. Penguin's missile, Sidewinder, to the face! Yeah, there will be super, super vengeance. What you're saying now is just me putting out my actual proper turrets to defend the places I thought would most need proper defense. But yeah, um, this is, this is, this is unacceptable. This is beyond the pale. Um, I hope his freaking Jedford or whatever, his, well, John B. I'm gonna find him. I'm gonna find fucking John B. I'm gonna fucking kill him. I'm gonna kill all their ace pilots. I'm gonna fucking... There will be there'll be some serious shit going down next episode. I'm gonna really I'm gonna I'm gonna fucking murder some people is what's gonna happen. But yeah, uh so <laughs> Yeah, bit of a bit of a bit of a sad note, but I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been KSB with Tape. I will see you next time. <laughs>